Hello dear student, this is Devak Shah from LG Institute of Engineering and Technology under the LG University. Our today's topic we are going to discuss about the asynchronous finite state machines where we are going to discuss about the asynchronous sequential circuit. Now so far we learned that the sequential circuits are always having with the clock signal, right? It is having a kind of flip flops and once you apply the clock, see it becomes a single Yes, circuit it becomes a kind of sequential circuit right but today's uh, session we are going to discuss about the asynchronous sequential circuit which is purely and purely based on the combinational logic where there is a little bit change in the combinational logic where output of the combinational logic again will fit back to the input by that way we can define or we can design a kind of asynchronous sequential circuit as such it is a kind of sequential circuit that means obviously there are certain stages let's say there are three stages and the third stage input depends on the output of the second stage same way the input of second stage depends on the output of first stage right so based on that all the circuitry are kind of combinational logic where there is an absence of a clock signal so based on that particular design let us discuss first what is asynchronous sequential circuit. So here the asynchronous circuits do not rely on clock, rather they exploit the delays of gates and other circuits elements of their operations. So here some of the output of combinational logic again fit back to the input. So that will generate a kind of delay. So ultimately it's part of the design we are going to discuss about how the kind of asynchronous sequential circuits can be designed uh, based on a kind of transitions table. So with larger synchronous systems it is often desirable to allow certain subsystems to operate asynchronously to reduce the delay in some part of the big digital circuits we have to reduce the delays for that in between part of the discrete section we can use this kind of asynchronous sequential circuits the structure of this asynchronous circuits uh, it's having a delay elements in place of flip flops the combination of signals that appeared at the primary input and delay outputs define the total states so example of NAND and NOR cross couple latch this is a one kind of asynchronous sequential circuit now here you can see this particular block diagram where there are certain inputs like x1 to xn and you are going to get your output like z1 to zn based on that some portion of output in terms of the capital y1 y2 and yk and that is providing a delay and again fitting back to the small letters y1 y2 and yk based on that we define a kind of asynchronous sequential circuits so here when an input variable changes the value the y secondary variables this one when input changes the value y secondary variables do not change instantly because this a kind of delay is providing a feedback that is from output to input right so based on that again we are going to discuss in steady state condition the y's this one and the capital y's are the same but during the transition they are not so once this particular y let's say it's zero is fitting back to here because of this delay see instead of zero it will get the one because it will take the previous state output right by that way it will generate a kind of delay so this is a kind of one of the biggest drawback in a kind of asynchronous sequential circuits so there are certain modes of operations here we can see the fundamental mode of operation when a change in circuit inputs has occurred no other change in any output value occurs until the circuit enters in a stable state so that means here because of this delay circuit may go into unstable state so the two types one is a single input change another one is a multiple input change so there are certain advantages and disadvantage low power high performance no need of clock but disadvantage is that complexity of the design process so there are certain steps of this uh, designing of asynchronous sequential circuit so based on that we can see the kind of steps step number one identify the states and state variables check whether sr is equal to zero in the in the case of the circuit with latches derive the logic equations plot each equation in a k map 
develop transition table by combining each map into the one table so the complete process we are going to now discuss in one example you can see a kind of uh, develop the stable state so it's your responsibility to develop the stable state during the transition then create a flow state draw flow diagram and finally you can come with the circuit behavior so that will reduce the kind of problem now in this particular circuit you can see this is a kind of asynchronous sequential circuit analysis where this is a kind of circuit where you can observe y1 is again feeding back to the here this particular so here y1 is again feeding back to this particular gate y2 is again feeding back to this particular gate right so based on that if you follow the boolean function of y1 see y1 is nothing but x into y1 that is the end gate and plus that is the or and that one this particular signal is coming from here which is nothing but x this into y2 same way y2 that is again based on x into y1 so you can see the y2 again depends on the complement of y1 y1 is also part of the output right same way again y2 is nothing but the x dash into y2 so again see this y2 uh, previous state again the present state depends so this is what a kind of feedback is again given to the uh, part of the input by that way this asynchronous sequential circuits can be designed a biggest drawback is this this y2 depends on the previous case of a previous state of the y2 right and obviously this will generate a kind of delay so based on that we analyze this particular circuitry and we define based on this particular transition table so once you uh, define a kind of truth table and from truth table if you follow this particular boolean function and based on that if you draw a kind of k map for both the functions y1 and y2 see there is a kind of transition you can see so from y1 and y2 this is a particular k map diagram you can see and that particularly k map diagram will give you a map of x into y1 plus x dash into y2 this is the same function that we can uh, obviously define in this particular term right so now based uh, term like based on that once you apply 0 0 0 see the output is 0 right same way here for a y2 based based on that your output is 0 so what in terms of combining as a part of the circuit combining this two outputs y1 and y2 see you can see 0 i am going to take from here uh, one more 0 i am going to take from here so this combined it will become a 0 0 so combined with the effect of x into y1 into y2 you can see y1 into y2 capital y1 into y2 in this particular transition diagram right so where uh, this 0 again is shifted to here this one is shifted to here you will see the 0 1 this one is shifted to here this another one you shifted to here that is the one one this zero is shifted to here and this one is shifted to here you can see the zero one right now see the states like zero zero then zero one then one one and one zero you can see this particular state is a zero zero see that is defined by the zero zero now another state is zero and one see this is a zero and one the third state is one one and see this is a one one 1 0 and 1 0 like that way so here from this particular transition you can also define the state here you combine this particular transition tables in term of outputs xy and uh, in terms of x1 and x2 so based on that we define this particular states are the stable states right so we have to find a gap here of unstable state and we have to remove the unstable state which normally you define as a delay. So here you can see the transition table. So that's what transition table we found in our previous slide where you can see for a state to be stable, the value of y must be the same as y1 and y2. So whatever y1 and y2, the, your, the stable state is must be the 0, 0 like y1 and so that is the same replica of applied input y1 and y2. Why? Because your output is same as the input as we have discussed. So see, this is 0, 0, again it's a 0, 0, right? But during the transition from capital Y to the small y, see, that is also possible. From 0, 0, it will also go to 0, 1. Same way 0, 1, it goes to 1, 1, but instead of 1, 1, this should go to 0, 1. That means your output is, let's say, 0, 1, your, your input, which is feeding or coming from the 
output which must be the same as 0 1 right so this 0 0 must be the 0 0 this 0 1 must be the 0 1 this 1 1 must be the 1 1 and this 1 0 must be the 1 0 this 1 0 must be the 1 0 this is a stable state so the ideal circuitry will always follow the capital Y as a small y right but see the unstable states you can in this particular blocks like unstable is y is not equal to y like 0 1 0 1 1 1 and 1 0 respectively so your job is to remove this kind of unstable state and make the circuit is stable so from that you can uh, get this kind of information from x is moving from 0 to 1 you can see the consider the square of x is 0 here y is equal to 0 0 it is a stable state when x changes to 0 to 1 see the circuit changes the value of y to 0 1 this state is called unstable state right because this is replica y1 y2 is same as the capital y1 and y2 right instead of that when x goes from 0 to 1 see it will change the state so this states here all the states we define as an unstable state and the feedback causes a change in y to 0 1 the circuit reaches to stable state right so in general if, the, if a change in input takes the circuit to an unstable state and y will change until it reaches to the stable state right so ultimately here from this transition table you have to make or you have to analyze the stable state versus unstable state of this asynchronous sequential circuits right based on that we further discuss about the map of this uh, transition table where you can define this particular state like a b c and d from that see this is a b to b c to c and d to d remains the same but instead of that when x goes from 0 to 1 see the state is going to be changed like b c d and a right so from this you can see this 0 0 remains 0 0 0 1 1 1 see there this remains the a is like this way and this two steps with two inputs and one output you can see this one kind of uh, transition diagram so here it is called the primitive flow table because it has only one stable state in each row right but it is flow table with more than one stable state in the same row so this is these are just example to show which uh, state is a stable state and which state is an unstable state in a in asynchronous circuits with respect to the transitions right same way here that part we have already discussed based on that if you change the y y is equal to x1 into x2 dash plus x1 into y from this particular circuitry see you can go for and find this kind of uh, stable and unstable state uh, transition same way z is equal to x1 into x2 into y from that see you can also going to get this particular state as a one where this, these are the actual output and that feeding back to the input as a part of the feedback but because of that this is also going to be changed in an unstable state so finally your job is to identify unstable state and uh, at the part of the design you have to remove it right in this uh, drawbacks and one of the major drawback is kind, kind of the race condition now what is this race condition here the race condition is nothing but a kind of let's say there are three stages so the input of second stage depends on the output of first stage input of third stage depends on output of second stage but instead of uh, taking the output of second stage the third stage will take the input from the output of the first stage where it's completely bypassed the second stage due to the timing transition due to the uh, lapses of time this condition is called the race round condition right so if two or more state variables like three variables or three states change in a response to a change in a an input then there is a race condition right so 0 0 1 uh, 0 1 and 1 1 so this 1 1 is directly taking this 0 0 like that way but instead of that it should goes in a sequence and uh, because of this whatever problem arise in a digital circuits this condition is called the race round condition or race condition again in a critical race is like if the final steady state depends on the order of changes in a uh, state variables so these are the example of race condition as well as the critical condition you can see here 0 0 is directly going into 1 1 Th these are the possibilities like 0 0 going into 0 1 then 1 1 0 0 0 is going into 1 0 and then 1 1 so these are the possibility of the non-critical cases why this non-critical cases because output remains the same see this is 1 1 1 1 and 1 1 second case 0 1 0 1 0 1 
doesn't matter whether it is a uh, you know output remains the same so this conditions are the non critical condition but in a critical condition see the output is going to completely change which is a kind of critical condition where the state is going to be changed right so if you are to deal with the instability where you can see this particular circuitry where you will find the kind of oscillations when x1 and x2 both are 1 1 there is no steady state condition right so, so why because obviously this y is always goes from 0 then 1 then again 0 then 1 so that oscillation is continuously making and taking uh, here as part of the y so this always becomes a kind of instability condition right so your design criteria um, you have to select such a way that the stability can be removed in a unsynchronous sequential circuits right thank you dear students if you have any doubt uh, you can write in a comment box thank you very much